Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I got a note here from a viewer um, around movie-based comics. So let's get to that. We can kind of talk a little bit about movie-based comics. Uh, the man goes, hey Perch, and rest in peace, Alan Grant. Uh, by Alan Grant uh, uh, is tragic. And here's another creator, you know, another creator that uh, certainly talented, certainly, I mean, that's certainly, I mean, of course talented. Alan Grant uh, did an amazing amount of work, uh, covered, you know, a, a decent amount of characters. I mean, quite, everybody kind of sticks to, to the same ones, but Alan Grant actually covered quite a few characters and you know, beautiful render and even kind of late in his life, you know, in the last few years still would put out really great work. He's another creator who absolutely could have used some work. Uh, when I say could have used, I'm not, I don't think he was, uh, you know, impoverished and, and starving or anything like that, but he could have used work because he still wanted to work and he still had the chops and the talent to do so. I put Alan Grant on uh, any book uh, over quite a few artists today. So definitely rest in peace, Alan Grant. Uh, a number of people uh, reached out a couple, like a week or so ago, I did a, uh, video called Looking After Creators. It's obviously something that's very um, near and dear to my heart. So I'm very passionate, passionate about, um, you know, and, and uh, people speculated that I was talking about Alan Grant, um, unfortunately, and, and uh, she has now posted on her Facebook, so it is public. Uh, I was actually talking about Rachel Pollock, who uh, let, the, let the people know via her page uh, that she has uh, advanced stage cancer. And she is getting treatment, and so uh, my, my best goes out to Rachel, and I hope that she is able to uh, fight it. Obviously, she was a guest on this show uh, a while back and, and did an amazing interview. I recommend you go look it up. I think uh, Rachel did a pretty astounding version of Doom Patrol that I absolutely loved. And it's, it's definitely strange. It's definitely you know, subculture-type work, it's, it, but that is what Doom Patrol was. And I think uh, she was incredibly, incredibly creative and uh, just just um, uh, filled with talent. And somebody, obviously, who's still doing comics today has a project uh, with uh, Joe Corallo, who's also, of course, a, a guest on the show. Uh, Rachel and Joe are working together on a book. Uh, but, uh, you know, definitely, you know, heart goes out to Rachel. Uh, incredible talent and, and definitely would like to see. I haven't seen a single news uh, site uh, report on it, uh, but she has publicly posted. So, you know, my best wishes, hopefully your best wishes as well, goes out to Rachel and fighting cancer and um, getting the help she needs to, uh, to fight through it. So, uh, but let's get back to this mail. Uh, the, the mail writer says, uh, my first ever comic was an Alan Grant issue of Detective 596. Loved his work and he will be missed. Absolutely. Uh, I have a question for you. Do you think the big two should make better use of some of their movie properties into comics? It's always kind of surprised me that we've never had a Pirates of the Caribbean or Matrix comics. Obviously, be smart about it. Don't go making a comic of forgotten B-movies. But I'm just wondering, since things like crossover gimmicks seem to make money, why the big two don't pull some of their in-house IP out and use that? Um, also, I can say shamelessly. Okay, okay before we get we'll get to the shameless part in a moment. So... Um, I, I, you know, it is peculiar and here's the, the odd part about it, right? So in many cases, uh, there are rights issues. Like even if a studio puts out a movie, there's, it's tangled up. So it's not always, you know, the, the rights don't always extend to do comics. Uh, but in many cases they do. And I think that there's an opportunity to do things in the comics that are more bold and ambitious. The part that's a little, you know, and I think that's, that's kind of how it used to be. Uh, but lately, when they do comics that tie into movies, they do kind of hyper-realism. They do things that could be a movie. And I'm sure the writer and the editor and everybody involved is kind of hoping that the comic will be translated into a movie. But I think they should take a different approach. I think they should take the, the thing that could never be made into a movie. The thing that is so outlandish, so big, so huge, uh, just, just off the charts uh, insane. Do, go, go for the biggest idea you can possibly think of that isn't constrained by budget or actor or any of that. Um, I, I think that uh, it would not be for me. So I, have to, I want to say it off the bat. And I'm betting it won't be for a lot of you either. But if I was Disney, I would put out a MCU, call it uh, Marvel or whatever, comic that was based off of the movies, meaning the likenesses were the same, the origins were the same, everything else was the same. And do your Avengers 4, 5, 6, do your extra adventures that we didn't get to see in the movie theater. 
uh, that featured, you know, Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr., you know, and, and, and just just do it. Um, I Again, it wouldn't be for me. I doubt it would be for many long-term comic collectors, but it would be certainly something that moviegoers could feel like they step right into. The characters are familiar, they're, you know, and, and keep it, you know, go crazy, do things that would be hard to do budget-wise in the movies, but don't do things that are going to isolate the movie audience. Like, you can't get in there and and uh, make radical changes to the characters. The goal is to, you know, get people who like the movies, the normies, to, you know, watch, you know, read the comics. I, I think it would be easy money. Put it this way, it'd be, it'd be worth doing as an experiment. But but beyond that, you know, why not the Aliens Predator comic book crossover that also ties into Terminator and eight other things? I mean, go crazy. Do an insane book. Um, I, I think that there is money being left on the table in, in this regard. And, and granted, look, again, you can always do the hyper-realistic thing. Um, you know, if you're HBO, you could do, I, I, who knows what, what they'd want to adapt. But the, the Matrix is a good example. Do the Matrix comic. And you can certainly do something that fits right in as if it would be a movie. But I would push it farther. You know, do the earth-breaking adventure. Because, look, you have the perfect fallout position. If everybody hates it, if you go too far, if you do some radical, crazy idea, then you get to go, well, it's a comic universe. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't count. You know, you can stick to the movies. It's fine. Um, but more, more than likely, I mean, do the things that everybody wishes would happen in the movies but can't. Do the crazy time travel story where, you know, old Neo and young Neo are interacting together and, and you know, that, that you can't do today. Uh, but, you know, maybe soon with uh, CGI. But, but, I mean, do, do some crazy stuff. Um, I think that there's probably a decent market. Again, it's, it's probably not the market that listens to this show, but I think there's a decent market for people who would like some comic book adaptions if they're done in the right way. Don't don't you know create them as if you're going to sell them in a comic shop. You could certainly do that, but create them Tonkabon style. Put them out in your big box stores, your Targets, your WalMarts, and you know pick like your four or five biggest properties that you own. And, you know, like Dogman, come out with something, you know, two times, four times a year that basically explores this universe. I think it would be a complete no-brainer to do. I, that's, that's, I think it would make total sense. And I'd like to see it. Um, that, that's, that's, I, I, I'd like to see it. Again, I don't know that I'd like to read it. Typically, those stories are, are awkward and weird. But one of the reasons why I, I often find them awkward and weird is that they, they don't, they don't push the boundaries that comics can do. They instead stay very, very basic, very vanilla. And, and they also kind of scream, this doesn't matter because it's not, you know, the movies, it's not the main canon. And so if you're, if you're going to be stuck with that, that handicap, then why not go crazy and say, well, if you, if, okay, if you say it's not going to matter, then let's do the most batshit insane, big widescreen budget, blow it out kind of thing you can do. I, I'd, I'd be curious to see it. Anyway, um, let me uh, finish off this this mail here because mail gets to a plug, and I'm always happy to do a little plug. So the plug goes. Also, can I shamelessly plug my new ebook here? It's one dollar. It's my first ebook, first of many, and I'm planning using the proceeds of my ebooks to one day fund my own comic. It's a story of a low life mall Santa trapped in his mall over Christmas weekend with a monster. That sounds cool, actually. The pacing may come across as comic booky because that's how the story was originally initially written. Um, so that sounds great. And uh, it is called Mall Santa. And the link, uh, the Amazon link is in the description to this video. And, you know, and, and, I, and maybe I'll, I'll try and put it in the video. Although YouTube eats those from time to time because YouTube is a big, big dick. By the way, um, if you are mailing me asking me why YouTube deleted your comic. You are mailing the wrong person. I have no idea. They are dicks. Uh, no doubt about it. So so I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, your, your beef is not with me. Um, I haven't deleted a, com a comment in I have no idea how long. Um, I just wish it's YouTube uh, punt a bunch of you off of my subscription uh, list, which is very nice of them to do. Um, I wish they would actually punt out the bots and the, you know, the, you know, the, the basically the, the same jerk shows up trolling for his sex site uh, each and every video. And you, you can't, you can't take care of that one, huh, YouTube? You're not able to, you're not able to tackle that. Well, thanks for nothing. Anyway, uh, go check out Mall Santa. And uh, thank you very much for the question. And while you're at it, 
head on over to Rachel Pollock's uh, Facebook page and uh, wish her well as well and, and uh, speedy recovery. And we're all rooting for her. Thanks for listening.